In this video, uh, we introduce the concept of probability. Um, and I've got three terms here I just want to define and give you quick examples of, which will help, I think, um, make the conversation a little easier. And then uh, a, an important principle that comes up a lot in probability. And then a, an example here. So probability you can view as a measurement of likelihood. And it's a scale. It's a scale measurement that ranges from 0 to 1, where 0 means that the event is impossible and a probability of one means that that event is certain and the spectrum ranges in between. Um, the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. So first let's talk about an experiment. Let's just say you roll a die, a six-sided die. So you roll a fair die. The sample space is just all the outcomes that could happen. So what could happen? You could get a one, you get a 2, you get a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. So there's our sample space. It's just everything that could possibly happen. An event is a subset of the sample space. So for, ex for instance, what if I said um, in the same experiment, you know, what's the probability of getting an even number? So probability of even. Probability of even number. Um, get, so getting an even number would be the event. So, so the event is actually getting the even number. And so here I'm going to make the, that list. So getting the even number would mean you could get a 2, a 4, or a 6. And if you want to look at the probability of getting that even number, then it's simply the number of events, uh, the number of events in the event, which in this case is 3, divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space, which is 6. So that probability is 3 6 or 1 half, not surprisingly. Okay, so there's some terms and a few quick examples. Now what I want to draw your attention to is this problem here, which is going to illustrate the usefulness of this principle up here. We've already looked at the multiplication principle for counting. Um, and the multiplication principle for probability works very much the same way. It's a, it's a shortcut that allows us to get answers without having to draw so many tree diagrams in some sense. So let's, let's look at this example. You flip a coin and you roll a die. What's the probability of getting a head and an even number? Well, first let's, let's draw out a tree diagram that represents the sample space. So what are all the outcomes? Well, when you flip the coin, you can get a head or you can get a tail. At that point, once you roll the die, you could get a head, and then you could get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, four uh, a 5, or a 6. I need to work on my trees here. Right, you could get a, you could get a 1, a 2, 3, 4, Five or a six. So one. Not the best trees, but it's okay. Same with the tail. You could get after you flip the coin and get a tail. You could get a one, a two, three, four, five or a six. Right, and so this this tree diagram, in some sense, contains the whole sample space. Right, like how many outcomes are there? Well, there's twelve branches. Right, six after the head and six after the tail, so there's twelve total branches. So there's twelve events in the sample space, and how many of those are are um, are the event ahead with an even number? Well, that would just be since it's ahead, we can limit ourselves to the top diagram, and the even numbers here are the two the 4 and the 6. So the probability of a head, say head and even number, H and E, is equal to 3 out of the total 12 possibilities, or 1 fourth. Now what the multiplication principle of probability tells us is that we don't have to do these tree diagrams. What we can do is instead say, well, the probability of getting ahead, that's just, I mean, imagine that we're just flipping a coin and we're, we're, we're interested in the probability of getting ahead. That's just one half, right? One out of two. And the probability 
if you just think about rolling the die, the probability of getting an even number, well that's just three out of six, right? There's three even numbers out of the six. And so if you want to know the probability of getting a head and an even number, and by the way, this, this uh, symbol here, this upside down U, is often referred to as and, so I could have put an upside down U here. I'm going to note that up here. This stands for and. So the probability of a head and an even number is just the probability of head, which is one half times the probability of getting an even number, which is 3 6. And we see that when you do that multiplication, you get 3 out of 12, or 1 fourth, which is what we got above. And so that's a very important principle when you think about it, because it, it means we don't have to do these tree diagrams. The multiplication principle of probability, which we just used here in blue, tells us that if the probability of one event is a certain number, and the probability of another event is a certain number, given that that other one happened, then the, you can just multiply those probabilities to get the probability of the, the overall event. So in, in sort of technical terms, we're going to write that, the, let's suppose that the probability of an event A is equal to some value, say P with a little 1 here, and the probability of an event B is equal to another value. Uh, and I'm going to put kind of in parentheses here, under the assumption that A occurred. Okay, so probability of the event A is P1, the probability of the event B is P2, under the assumption that A had already occurred, then the probability of both, the probability of them both are happening, is just the multiplication of those two probabilities. Now there's some, there's a little nuance we'll talk about later on that explains why I wrote this under the assumption that A occurred. Sometimes that assumption is not even necessary. For instance, um, in this case, regardless of what happened on, on the head, right, when you flip a coin and get, and get a head or a tail, that has no effect on what happens when you roll the die, right? These are two different objects, they're not going to affect each other. There are certain cases where they do affect each other, and that's why I had to write under the assumption that A occurred, because the multiplication principle still works in those situations. Um, so in any event, this keep this principle in mind. We'll be using it, and I'll be referring to it later on. But this is uh, just an introductory, introductory video on probability.